Hello, Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video here on iStarly TV. I'm your host, Scarecrow, and today we're going to talk about the open world of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to talk about the good, we're going to talk about the bad, we're going to talk about the ugly, <laughs> if there is any ugly. So, first of all, let's just start. I know we've talked a little bit about this before on the channel, but it has been officially confirmed by the Pokemon company themselves in trailers and in news articles on their website that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are going to be open world RPGs. They actually said this, there was a trailer earlier today in the Pokemon Presents and they use that terminology, open world RPG. I believe they said something like this is the first open world Pokemon RPG or something along those lines. Obviously, the wild area in Pokemon Sword and Shield and the game's Legends Arceus, or the game Legends Arceus, both tested the waters for what could be an open world Pokemon game, even though those two were not completely open world Pokemon games. They were similar, but they, they did not go the full open world. And so obviously, just to start it out, this is extremely exciting. I am extremely excited to play a fully open world Pokemon game. A lot of their press uh, material has, has said things along the lines of you can explore the game at your own leisure, you, there is no set path, you can kind of do whatever you like, basically I'm paraphrasing here, but it sounds as though you will start the game, you will get your starter, and you will have the freedom to roam the entire region. I imagine there will probably be maybe areas that you can't get to unless you get maybe a certain move or maybe once you get either a rideable Pokemon or maybe like an upgrade for your rideable Pokemon because they did show in this trailer today some rideable Pokemon. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll talk about that in a separate video, but either way, um, the fact that this is a very open world game is very exciting and even in the trailers we've seen the trainer, the, yeah, the trainer exploring the region and we've seen kind of areas where Pokemon are roaming around in the wild, and I think that's great. I, that's always been really fun to me, and that's something that I've enjoyed about the wild area of Sword and Shield, something I enjoyed about Legends Arceus, and it's cool that we're seeing that here as well, that you will be able to see Pokemon in the overworld, because it makes the world feel a lot more lively, and it makes it feel like an actual, like, maybe you could say, real world Pokemon game. So I'm really, really excited for the open world of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and I'm really excited for these games in general, so please let me know in the comments what do you think about the open world, the first ever fully open world Pokemon games. Uh, from what you've seen in trailers, what do you think of the region, what do you think of the Pokemon you've seen so far, let me know. And now I want to talk about another element, kind of the other side of the, maybe you could say the coin if you want to say it that way, for, the, for this open world Pokemon game. The other basically the issue I, I see and something that I'm honestly a little bit worried about with what we've seen so far and what we've heard so far about these games. It has been said in their in their official materials. Now, I don't think this has been a, like, like truly, truly confirmed to the degree where we know exactly like how much of an issue this might be, but they've used language that suggests that basically there might not be any level scaling. So when it comes to an open world, obviously the selling point of an open world is that an open world game is that you can explore the region freely. For example, a, go a good example I think is Breath of the Wild uh, on the Switch, which is a game where you could, as soon as you start the game, as soon as you step out into the world, you are free to go wherever you want. And there's a little mini kind of tutorial in that game, but even beyond that, you're free to do whatever you want, go wherever you want. You can defeat the four kind of mini bosses, the, the divine beasts, in whichever order you want. You can collect all of the, the Korok seeds or not. You can, I mean, there's just so much you can do and you can choose how to do it. You could even go to the final boss, the quote unquote final boss, as early as you want to and take him on, even if you're kind of, if you don't have enough resources yet. Like if you're a skilled enough player at that game, you can take on the final boss and, and defeat him, even though it'll be very challenging. In a Pokemon game, there's something that's a little different here. And, and even in other games, this is maybe not so different, but in Pokemon games, obviously you're talking about wild Pokemon. You're talking about the trainers that you face. 
of course, you're talking about the gym leaders that you face. And so if it's going to be a truly open world Pokemon game, you would imagine that if I if I leave my starting my starting route with my with my starter Pokemon at level five, and I want to go all the way across the map to this other section of the region, I can do that. It sounds like I can absolutely do that. However, my concern is how will I how will I fare out there? What levels will those wild Pokemon be if I run to the other side of the region? and tr and I want to catch a rare Pokemon. Like maybe maybe I do some research before I play the game and I learn, oh, Murkrow's in this game. I love Murkrow, true story. And I know that Murkrow is in this, this area way on the other side of the map. And so once I get my starter, I'm gonna run and go find a Murkrow to catch it. But my concern is, will that Murkrow be around the level of my starter Pokemon or will it be much, much higher? Are the different areas of this open world kind of set in their levels or will they scale? Now, this is something I don't think we've seen confirmation about one way or the other. Of course, with the wild area, the levels do scale. So when you start the game, once in, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, once you enter the wild area, most of the Pokemon that you find that are roaming around are low level. You can catch them, you can battle them, um, and you know they're they're low level. Of course, there are the big roaming Pokemon such as you know there's a there's a Snorlax that walks around the bridge. There's an Obstagoon that walks around the daycare area. Those are always level 60, and obviously, if you've just started your game, you cannot catch them nor can you defeat them. I, I mean, maybe you could if you get super lucky or something, but the game physically does not let you throw a Pokeball at them. But all the other Pokemon in the wild area, they scale with the levels. As you collect more gym badges, the levels of those Pokemon go up. And so finally, once you've collected the final gym badge, all the Pokemon in the wild area are now level 60 and, and that does not change. So I wonder if they'll do something like that with Scarlet and Violet. I imagine they will because once again, that is what they did with uh, Legends, or I'm sorry, with uh, the open, um, the wild area in Sword and Shield. So I imagine that is going to be the case here as well, as far as the wild Pokemon in the open world. But my big concern as well is something that they've been kind of flaunting is the fact that there is no set path for the gym leaders, for the gym leader challenge. So there are eight gym leaders in this game as per usual, and they've specifically said there is no set path. This is directly from the Pokemon website. You can purposefully seek out stronger gym leaders, or you can simply stop by a gym that happens to be located in a town that you come across on your journey. So my question here is when they say you can purposefully seek out stronger gym leaders, do they mean like, Maybe, okay, if, if I have a team of water type Pokemon, I can purposefully go to the electric type gym leader whenever I want and they'll be a stronger gym leader for me and I can defeat them. Or do they mean that of the eight gym leaders, each of them is always going to have the same level of Pokemon? Honestly, that sounds more likely and it is a little disappointing. So basically, they, they flaunt the ability to to do the gym leaders in any order, but if the levels don't scale, I do wonder if that's really as much of a selling point as they want it to be. <laughs> because if the ice type gym leader, for example, will always have their Pokemon at level 37, for example, I don't know if this is the case, but I'm just making this guess up, then I cannot fight the ice type gym leader first. I cannot fight the ice type gym leader second or even third. I have to wait until my Pokemon are around that level to fight the ice type gym leader. So to me, I'm a little disappointed in that. I really hope that maybe we're misinterpreting this or maybe they've just been a little wishy-washy, no pun intended, with the with the wording and maybe there is level scaling. So I'd like to know what you think about that. Uh, do you hope that the gym leaders scale in levels or do you hope that, or do, do you not really care? right? I think that this is something that I know I'm kind of complaining about this now, and I am admittedly worried about it because I hope the gym leader levels will scale. However, at the end of the day, I'm going to enjoy this game. I already know I'm going to enjoy this game. So this is, you know, even if the gym leader levels don't scale, that's fine for me. It would be fun. It would be awesome. It would be amazing if I could 
challenge any gym leader in any order and the first gym leader I challenge their Pokemon are like let's say level 10 the second gym leader I challenge whoever it is their Pokemon are level 14 the third gym leader I challenge whoever it is their Pokemon are level 20 I don't know that would be really really cool but I don't know if um I don't think that's gonna happen but either way I mean one final thing about all this is they have they did they did say in the trailer today that there are basically three kind of main stories in this game and you can choose which of these three stories to focus on and and you can focus on all three in different orders you can kind of do you can kind of do them complete each one one at a time or you can like work a little bit on the first story then work a little bit on the second then a little bit on the third then go back to the first etc one of those stories is the gym leader challenge so we don't know what the other two stories are yet but i imagine like if a person wanted to they could go just go through the gym challenge get their pokemon to really high levels beat that story basically and then go to the other ones if they want so at the end of the day i love the amount of freedom that there seems to be in pokemon scarlet and violet but we'll, we'll see what happens as far as the levels i really hope that there will be good level scaling because that'll make the game more truly open world i feel it would it would allow us a lot more freedom because we can go anywhere and at least have a chance wherever we go although i can see the other argument too i could see it being okay, if there's this one location of the game that is always gonna have really high level Pokemon, you know, it, it makes it fun the first time you're exploring if you stumble upon this really scary area with terrifyingly high Pokemon. So I could see it either way, honestly. I just wanted to kind of open the discussion to this and see what you all think. So please let me know in the comments, what do you think about the level scaling and the gym leaders and the stories and all of that? What do you think of the open elements of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I'm really excited for these games. I don't think I've said that enough. I hope you are too. Please go ahead and subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. I'm going to start posting a lot more. We're only three months away from Scarlet and Violet's release. I cannot wait. I'm super, super excited. I will be posting more Pokemon videos very soon. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment for more. Subscribe for more as well. And also click the bell for more notifications. But anyways, I hope you have a great day. And let me know all, as well your favorite new Pokemon so far. I think Fido is really cute. See you later.